Welcome again to Data Lab Dialogues, a podcast out of the Data Lab in Copenhagen. Uh, the SAP Data Lab, that is, uh, that's part of the Experience Center in Copenhagen. My, my name is Thomas Madsen. I'm uh, head of the Data Lab and also Enterprise Architect uh, with the Danish uh, SAP organization. With me today, I have Karl Bergström. Hello, Thomas. Nice to be with you here. Enterprise Architect also yes, uh, I am. on the Danish organization, but uh, Swedish, of course, as we can <laughs> yes. hear. And, um, With us today, actually, we have uh, Gitte Christensen, head of uh, IT, or the head of BI uh, and advanced analytics uh, at Lemby Müller. And we are on site, actually, at Lemby Müller today uh, in uh, in the office in Kolding uh, with the warehouse in the background. So uh, a warm welcome, Gitte Christ. Thank you. And um, uh, nice of you to take time out of, I'm sure, your busy schedule and actually also hosting us here in uh, in your meeting room. Um, we have looked forward uh, to, to visiting you. It's actually only the second time that we are outside the Experience Center in Copenhagen uh, to do this podcast. Today, uh, the topic is uh, mostly BI and, and data, your field, of course. Uh, and one of the reasons why uh, I kind of, uh, we felt that it would be interesting to talk to you is that um, you actually use SAP tools uh, quite a lot to, 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 get, uh, to get your data out. And uh, also, I took note uh, that you once explained to me that hey, we don't have any issues with data quality because all our data is in our in our SAP systems. And I I wanted to hear more about that for sure. <laughs> But let's get back to that a little bit later. First, Gita, uh, who are you and uh, and what's your story? Well, I'm uh, I've been working with SAP for the last 25 years. I started working with SAP Master Data in 1998. Okay. And then I slowly evolved into the BW world in 2005. So I've been working with data and SAP systems uh, for my entire working life, basically. Mm. Um, and I'm, I'm actually a BW developer. Um, so I'm, I have a, a, you could say, techie profile, probably. Yeah. Um, but was appointed uh, head of BI four years ago. Right. So I'm... Um, more into an architect uh, infrastructure kind of role now. Okay, okay. Say. So no no more developing? I'm trying to keep my hands off. Ah, because okay. I wouldn't think quite often. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah. to, to yeah. that, yeah. So you are you are one of the persons that actually managed to take the step. I never managed that. I, I still, you still enjoy it too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you, you said you work with master data, uh, mm -hmm. so basically just uh, uh, in the ECC system, yeah. or yeah, yeah, okay. And helped uh, do rollouts of. Uh, I worked with uh, Velux at that time. Ah, we yeah, did, right. we yeah. implemented SAP in late '90s, beginning of the zeros. Yeah, yeah. Many other many other companies, I think, mm -hmm. did at that point in time, and consolidated their IT platforms into the SAP product. Mm -hmm. I think that was quite quite common yeah. at that time. Yeah, okay. yeah. What, was it even at that point in time seen as a as a key component, the master data? Because now a lot of our customers is transforming from I, old to new. And I don't think it was as, as, strate as strategic no. as it has become over the years. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the importance of data mm -hmm. is just going up and up yeah. and up. Yeah. 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 So yeah. the data agenda itself has turned into a, a a paradigm of it own and a very own, clear discipline it's it's exactly it's, yeah. 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 so i think the development we've seen from for the past 12 15 years where we started talking about big, the big data agenda then some of us went out trying to execute on that mm. but we all found out i think that just having huge amount of data doesn't really solve anything Mm. It has to be good data. Yeah, exactly. It has and to be the model good. data. <laughs> and it starts Most with of master the time. data, right? Yeah. And it starts with master data. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, 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 the importance of, of data and quality of data really can't be over over exaggerated, mm. in my opinion. Mm. Mm. So that I think the, the 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 talks are shifting into this data talk. Okay, how can we make sure we have better data available for all, all kinds of different users? in a company uh, at the same time as we are securing a certain kind of quality to that data mm, mm, uh, mm, mm. without having to go through very um, scarce IT resources all the time. I think that's also one of the 
challenges. Uh, okay. Some are still hoping that we could really end up in a place where you wouldn't need data engineers, basically. Mm. I don't believe that, oh, okay. personally. I think you do need data engineers to model data together. But you, Gitte, are not, you just told us, actually, you are not in IT as such. Uh, um, no. So, so how is Lemmy Müller organized in that sense? I mean, is development, as you say, the, you, you used to be a BW dev, developer, you are no longer that. The BW developers, if you have any still at Lemmy Müller, are they organized in IT or in your department, which is outside of IT? They are organized in my department, yeah, yeah. actually, and I still have my all my developers uh, in my team. We don't have any offshoring. Okay, so you don't consider the modeling uh, in in BW as an IT matter; it's a business matter, so to speak. Yes, I I consider okay, it a business okay. matter because you have to understand the business mm. to model the data together. Absolutely, absolutely, mm. yeah, yeah. No, that's that's uh, really illuminating. I mean, I might be mistaken, but I kind of when when I visit other of our clients, I, I sense. I, actually, I need to ask the question now when I get elsewhere. But but I sense that that the BW personnel are actually in IT. What, I think your, they are in they most, are, yeah, most yeah, companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, on, and many companies have uh, have done off- offshoring in this area over the years. And I think many have come to the conclusion that they need to insource it again because yeah. it's so business dependent. Yeah, okay. Is that why it works for you? Is that why that's you one, have... That's uh, definitely <laughs> one of the reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's and it. I hate to give it away as easily as that. <laughs> that is, that's one of the yeah, reasons. Yeah. It is really interesting because being at some customers, sometimes they link integration together with the data and it mm-hmm. becomes a techie area and they take their responsibility. And then yeah. there is a little, there is a gap between yeah, then exactly. the needs and, and uh, yeah. But you solve that to keep you have. Yeah, we try to we 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 to some extent close the gap having having us uh, organized the way we are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not in IT. I have a huge uh, collaboration with our IT department yeah, of course. on yeah. this on yeah. the system side. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. but it's very it's very useful for us to sit closer to the business. Okay. So so when you when you have an issue, which you rarely have, of course, but when you have an issue with SAP software, then you call IT to get a node implemented. You don't do that in your organization. No, we don't. Yeah. We yeah. don't do a basis. Yeah. Yeah, I have a colleague in, yeah, okay, in IT okay. who helps us yeah, do okay, that. Great. I'm sure we'll get back to that, but but um, but Lemmy Müller, uh, I I know of Lemmy Müller because I work with SAP and I've met with you, Gide, uh, on on several occasions. Uh, but Lemmy Müller, uh, who are they? What do they do? Well, Lemmy Müller is the company that turned 175 years uh, last year. Whoa! <laughs> so it's not really That beats our 50 yeah. years. Yes, so, yeah, yeah, by far. Yeah. So it's it's a it's an old family-owned uh, company. Uh, we do wholesale wholesaling, uh, and is um, it's represented at 23 different locations in Denmark. And we, I have the 1,400 very clever colleagues. Yeah. Yes. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. and um, and we uh, well, we have a big location here in Kolding, right next to our one of our three big warehouses. Uh, we also have uh, twenty three shops. Um, yes. Yeah. And coming from the Swedish side, who, uh, what kind of products do Lembig Miller? All kinds of technical products, yeah. such as electrical products mm-hmm. and uh, plumbing products, clothing. Yeah. But we also do huge, um, huge business in within steel. We're the business uh, largest uh, steel wholesaler in Denmark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. So it's it's kind of you know steel plates, or is it steel that is somehow you know welded or all kinds of steel all products. kinds. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All kinds of different steel products. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. So wholesaler. So basically, uh, you 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 don't produce as such. No. You you buy. And then you and sell it again. And sell it yeah. again, yeah. So procurement is as important as the sales, I guess. Very important. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, okay, okay, great. And, and yes, taking also this bigger, we talk a lot about this, the challenges with supply chain and sourcing and the disruption. Has that has impacted you? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I have colleagues who are challenged at the moment to make sure products arrive in our warehouses at the right time because 
as you probably also know from from home. Yeah. Long delivery yeah. times on everything, basically. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So yeah. it's, it's really yeah. a problem. Yeah. A huge problem for, mm. for a company like ours. Yeah. 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 So, so does that then trigger uh, a lot of new requests from your your, your colleagues in in business on 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 data uh, to be provisioned to, yes, to sort of do? Yes, it always types? does when when things switch yeah. in the market. Mm. It usually spins off huge analysis requests, amount of analysis requests yeah. for yeah. new new ways of looking into data. Right. Yeah. 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 And one thing triggers something else. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just so, being now in this energy discussion that's going on, I guess, yeah, Denmark exactly. and Sweden, I mean, they do one thing and boom, things are happening differently. Yes. So we are coming out of an era of, of many years where things have been on, on 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 the upgoing, right? So we have had really good results for the past years, but now things are happening in the market and prices are changing and and working in a company with a huge warehouse and many products in the warehouse bought maybe expensive mm. uh, costs, ah, yeah. uh, costs, yeah. uh, but prices are going off right it depends on which prices you look at ah, yeah. but, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the shifts always uh, produce a lot of uh, requests for yeah. For data yeah. and yeah. exactly, and I get. I can imagine. I mean, yeah. fast insights to how exactly. how 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 do we exactly. act on these new situations? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this we we hear a lot, of course. And whenever Kelly and I go out and and promote SAP software, we we keep talking about you know change and uh, you know agility and and uh, and changing business con- uh, yeah. uh, circumstances and so on. And and we kind of say that hey, then you need. SAP solutions for that because they are truly agile. But you are using it. I mean, it, it does. The, I mean, uh, is it is it sufficiently agile for you, in your organization, uh, to 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 bring data to the business uh, when when these needs are are changing, or is there things that could be improved? Well, I think they are sufficiently agile, to be honest, mm-hmm. because we have a very good data in our platform, and if we need additional data from our ERP side, for instance, we were able to very fast uh, source them into our uh, platform, basically. Okay. And so I do think we have a quite an agile setup data-wise already. Okay. Um, yeah. It's a well-oiled machine. Sorry? Well-oiled machine. Yeah, it smooth. is. It is. <laughs> yeah, okay. To be honest, yeah. So, so you say you have ERP. Perhaps we should just uh, just briefly, you know, uh, um, discuss or... Oh. Get 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 the perspective of, of of your your SAP landscape. So, which uh, which SAP solutions do you have in place at Lemmy Müller? Well, we have a, a classic ERP system, mm. uh, three tier ERP system, mm. uh, as our sort of mother system, core yeah. system. That's the base of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we have um, the BI platform for which I'm responsible, which is a classic B- BW warehouse on top of a HANA database mm. that we also use natively. And we have a sub landscape transformation uh, incidents between our SAP system and the BW. Oh, yeah. Uh, so real time, real time replication of, of near real time, basically. Near, near real yeah. time, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we have an R server connected to our HANA implementation as ah, well. So okay. we can and, and are you doing a lot of predictive uh, stuff uh, yes, using the R server? Yes, we are doing a lot of predictive stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah. You connected that to Hannah Native, I guess, or yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Then we have a HR uh, SAP HR system as well. So like the classic like HCM or I think so. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I'm not too. No, no. <laughs> with the okay, so so two it's... two landscapes. Not yeah. uh, HR is not on top of the ERP system. It's oh, I think it's. Next to them. Next to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah. No, it's a uh, fine, fine, classic fine. setup okay. for some farmers. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we uh, in BW we have uh, acquired the SAP Analytics Cloud product mm-hmm. that we use for front end and yeah. uh, planning as well. Okay. So I think that basically describes our platform. Huh? And your da- then your data platform. If if you talk about age, how long have you used it? Is it been for several years? The BW system, for example. Oh, the BW system was uh, installed, I think, in 2009 when we did a huge SAP installation as well. That was before I was uh, mm. hired. But I think it's from that time on, basically. Yeah, yeah. So 
you can imagine it will have all the classic challenges that an instant with such an age has. Mm. Yes, it has developed over years from yeah, different yeah. colleagues <laughs> having different views on how, how should we do this yeah. architecture-wise within BW. But we have spent a lot of time trying to uh, simplify the architecture, basically, um, for years, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we are doing it right now to prepare for uh, BW for HANA, but, yeah. but it's also creating a lot. It's really creating a very, um, well, a very uh, agile environment, yeah. actually, to really, really make sure that you always keep things simple and never, never do. So you have been renovating yeah. as you have gone along, so you don't have... Yeah. I mean, so I think will, that's a school book example, at least, what I hear <laughs> is to do the Yeah, the because I like think that. many people give up on that task and say, yeah. okay, so if we have to do this, that's going to cost so much money that we don't want to do that. We are going to do just, uh, uh, what is it called? Greenfield uh, yeah, installation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I think we're actually going to be able to do a migration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so retain, you know, a lot of the work, and and of course you don't have to redo that. Uh, but but you have you have actually proactively uh, managed your your installation over the years, and that actually answers one of the questions that we had. I mean, to which extent do you actually, I mean, try to to be at the forefront, uh, anticipate uh, uh, the requirements, and and I understand that you kind of prepare yourself to actually be be ready to 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 meet the requirements, new requirements that, that come from business? Yeah. Well, that's that's at least one of my daily tasks uh -huh. to, to try to anticipate what's going to happen in two, three years, five years time mm -hmm. uh, and make sure we prepare for it because uh -huh. you don't want to end up at a point where you have to do everything at once because that's never going to happen. Uh -huh. Being allowed to you spend time on doing these sort of housekeeping kind of tasks is never easy to get uh, funding no <laughs> so it's really something that you have to steal bit by bit every now and then if you have a bit of time there okay so don't Here tell we anybody can yeah. now we have... clean this up right yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I always try to be in a in a dialogue with my boss to yeah. persuade him to to make it's sure a, we yeah. get a, a little a little lump of something every now yeah. and then to look into things like this. Yeah. Yes, I think it's very, I just think it's very important. Yeah. The payback is there uh, down the line. Yeah. Uh, you will be uh, much, much more agile, I guess. Yeah. And on that note, how, how are you organized? Do you have the full team within Lemvig Milo or do you have partners uh, supporting you? No, we have the full team within Lemvig Milo, so we do our own operations as well. Yeah. So we have been doing DevOps before the term was invented. <laughs> Because we, we consider the operations as just such an such a important part of having our platform perform properly. So that's something we do uh, every day and are very proud to do because yeah. we, we, find, we find great pride in it, to be honest. But can you elaborate a little bit on that? How do you organize yourself then around the Well, I, I have three uh, BW developers mm -hmm. who have do shifts one week at a time to do operations and just look at the sourcing every morning. Uh -huh. And that's really something that's not been... You won't find a lot of people who will say, I want to do that. Uh -huh. That sounds interesting. Yeah. But it is interesting yeah. because you will get a sense of what's <clears throat> going on on the platform. You will get a sense of what's working, what's not working. Mm. What kind of data sources are always causing problems every morning. Exactly. And yeah. then you get a chance to dig into it, find the root cause and just remove, remove it. Remove it so it doesn't happen so we again. Don't, so we don't spend too much time on incidents. We spend a lot of time developing actually because <laughs> the monitoring part is not very hard. That's fantastic. So, so this is sort of uh, instead of siloed, you are kind of uh, rotating. Yeah, uh, no, super, super. Yeah. I, I I used to work for Novo Nordisk, and mm -hmm. and and there we were in the operational side of it, and we were joking, saying laziness is my driver. I don't want to do this again. Exactly. This, and it's boring so to just, do it. So, so, so we so need to just, fix it. We you need, need to, to hire really lazy people because they only do. What that they well, once, and then the second time they think, it. oh, can I do something to fix this? <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it was just the, the, the drive. So, uh, DevOps. That's a DevOps mindset. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> uh, that sounds nice, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so that keeps you agile. Uh, I mean, from a modeling perspective, um, did you implement this LSA plus plus structure in your BW? We are or? trying to. We're yeah. taking small bits and pieces here and there from the architecture to to go the LSA plus yeah, plus. Yeah, 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 okay. And, and it's and also very easy with the SLT uh, setup yeah. to do it that way. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. On that note, me not being that deep into LS++, maybe there are some listeners, but what's that? Do, yes, so LSA++? Yes, yes, I'm not it's, as deep. It's, it's, I, mean, I don't know, do you want to explain? No, no, it? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to hear what it is. No, no, it's, it's, it's basically, it's, it's, not, it's a methodology, uh, or it's, it's guidelines on, on how, to, uh, how to set up and organize your data in a, in a data warehouse in such a way as to, to minimize redundancy of data and uh, to make your data models uh, as agile as possible so that you can actually quite fast, uh, if you need to create new models, uh, it's, it's simple to source information from, uh, from, from, uh, from the sources and, and, and create those new models. And, um, yeah, and, and quite a lot of our customers have, have adopted that, that uh, way of doing it, but, uh, but I mean, it's, it, it takes effort, of course, if you come from, uh, from a, um, a, um, an old way of modeling where you have a lot of data redundancies, it, it, it takes an effort to, uh, to, to get it right. And it um, sounds great. And, and I mean, it's, it's kind of what we, what we, what we emphasize when you, when you deploy uh, uh, BW on, on HANA, uh, actually. And, and it, 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 it's one and of I the benefits. That's maybe why I'm I think at least some companies are doing the greenfield thing because then they can, in fact, implement the LSA++ yeah, from, the, yeah, yeah. from the bottom or from the start. So exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, there, there is a lot of legacy, of course, and, 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 and why wouldn't there be? You, your, your BW is 13 years old yeah. uh, and, and the technology was different. Uh, the ways of modeling was different. Uh, so you, you did... What was there? I mean, you did it the right way. Yeah. But, but things it seemed changed, right, right at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I mean, uh, yeah, we see, unfortunately, quite a lot uh, that, that kind of uh, the, the task of redoing this is way too big. So, so they kind of postpone, postpone, postpone. And then all of a sudden, then you have, you know, the wall uh, and uh, you need to do something because yeah. there's some, some, some software component that is, no longer upgradable. It is no yeah. longer supported. You have to do something. You don't want to go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Data is important, uh, uh, and and you you mentioned actually we we also wanted to ask you how do you collaborate with IT? <laughs> no, sorry, with business. With business. <laughs> oh, but we are business. Yeah, you, you are, are business. business. You are business exactly. So how do you collaborate with IT? I guess you rotate your colleagues into. When you say you rotate them into ops, it's kind of they, they sit then with IT, I guess, for a while. Or no, for no, maybe? they just no. It's just basically a calendar. Uh, okay, so yeah, yeah, okay. Thing. Yeah. And then if if some of the users need to contact the backend, then that certain person will look into a certain mailbox. Uh, okay. It's really very very low key. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, right. Okay. But uh, but then yeah. So perhaps data. Uh, what sort of? Uh, I mean, data. Data. You you have. You you mentioned that you have good data quality, and and uh, we we like that story of course so much because you primarily uh, uh, use uh, BW. But why why is it that that your quality your data is is good? It's a good question, and I'm not sure I know the answer for that, but I can tell you a little story because we did a data to value uh, workshop with uh, SAP Denmark in Copenhagen this yeah. spring, yeah. with uh, which I facilitated, and I brought in some business colleagues and and people from my team, and we went through this data to value exercise with uh, Michael Nedeberg. Yeah. And he was very puzzled to see that the data <laughs> part didn't come out as he would expect, because this is the part where it becomes obvious that you have humongous data problems, but we don't, yeah. we don't really have very big problems in the data okay. area, at least for the use that we are using in micro. So mm -hmm. for the for the just basic BI reporting mm -hmm. and also for the advanced analytics. We have very good data. Mm. I think one of the reasons is that it's quite a small company 
And yeah. I think it's still very, in some places of the organization, very person dependent actually. But but people just do their thing. Yeah. So they take, take it very seriously and yeah. do what they were expected to do. Is that coming back to you, what you came from? Is master doctor managed properly, I take it seriously? Are, to, a that extent, it's not... to a large extent, I think they are. We have hundreds of thousands of products. So we have quite a lot of mass data. So there could be, there, it could be mistakes, but it's, there is a uh, quality. Obviously there are mistakes and, and, and certainly I'm sure we have uh, points for master data in which we could uh, improve for, for some purposes. Yeah. But for the purposes that I represent at my platform, we, have, uh, we do have really good data. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to protect, to be honest, because yeah. um, we, I, I get a lot of um, wishes from different parts of the organizations to build sort of data platforms in other places, so to speak. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm against it. I'm just saying that Every time you build a new data platform somewhere, you 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 introduce more complexity yeah. data-wise to your uh, organization and mm -hmm. one set of numbers and data definitions, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we haven't done that to a great extent at the moment. And, and, and I think it's really, it could be worth uh, considering um, strategically how you would want to proceed with this journey rather than just go do, I think. Yeah. But, I'm hoping. Sometimes on, on that, sometimes we hear, oh, there is a shadow IT outside yeah. uh, doing <laughs> other things. Yeah. Yes, well, yeah. is, that, is that something that no, you're facing think, or they are? No, I, I really don't think we have a shadow IT. No, I don't. No. So to that extent, I think we have quite a clean architecture mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. But I think it could, it could to go somewhere else if, if, if we're not careful. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm trying to say. We really should not underestimate the value of having a data set of this high quality. But I guess, I, I guess the reason why there is no shadow IT is because you actually deliver, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. so you have the data that, that is sought for and the data has the right quality. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, yeah. And that leads me actually to ask, uh, so what is that data? What, what kind of data do you amass in your, in your BW? Well, definitely uh, all our sales data and all the price data. And mm. that's uh, really the core of our reporting and also of our advanced analytics, because as I'm sure you can figure out if as a wholesaler, it's very important that we, um, the margins are very small in this business. So you have to be very good at what you do. Mm -hmm. So you always need to analyze every bit of the supply chain, basically, to uh -huh. make sure that you do everything just right. Optimize on vendors and transportation exactly. and yeah. goods sold and uh, th th yeah. th those. So definitely, sales data. Sales data is like probably eighty percent of our traditional reporting in, uh, B, in the BI area, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and, <coughs> and sales data and pricing is probably just as much in the advanced analytics part. So the finance bit is sort of not not so much actually. It's there, yeah. but, but 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 the sales is really yeah. what is taking up everybody's uh, Ah, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and and that's the business. That, yeah, I mean, finance is business as well, right? But but they are supporting uh, organization, I guess. So so the controllers, I guess, they work in BW also, but it's it's really the 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 uh, um, the purchasers and the salespeople that 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 use it uh, actively. I think they they use it actively uh, through uh, reports that yeah. have been produced by our business controllers. Yeah. Uh, so they each represent a certain part of the business and bring in uh, requests for reports or, or more correctly uh, uh, new data models yeah. if, if they yeah. need new models. Okay. Um, yes. on, on, on that note, maybe we should stay with data, but, but then your presentation, you mentioned that you're using uh, SAP Analytics Cloud. Yes. Uh, can you elaborate uh, what are you using in, in SAC? We are migrating uh, our, at this point in time, we are migrating our entire front end to SAP Analytics Cloud as uh, stories or analytic applications or uh, analysis for office uh, applications, basically. We are going with those three different uh, products, so to speak. 
we never went with the subjects. Mm. So we were we are really on very very old fashioned front end uh, tools uh, yeah. and and also as a preparation for the BW for Hana. Yeah, okay. We need to get rid of all that and all the Java stack. And uh, yeah, and yeah. So you have lots of web reports and. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, definitely something that we are spending time on at the yeah. moment. Uh, yeah. And then we also do business planning in the SAP Analytics Cloud. We have a rolling forecast that we do there. And we, as probably many other IP uh, or BI uh, platforms, um, have done a lot of integrated planning over the years on, on the BW platform. Mm -hmm. And we need, at some point in time, to put that into the SAP Analytics Cloud uh, environment. Yeah. And that is really much easier to use planning-wise than the integrated planning ever was. That, that was quite uh, yeah. time-consuming yeah, to... Yeah to build and, and also to change over time, yeah. very time consuming. The, the SAP Analytics Cloud is really more, if you, if it, it could, it could be unleashed to more, not so techy people, more yeah. business oriented people, in my opinion. Citizen developers. Citizen developers. <laughs> <That's> the word, <laughs> word I was it's looking for. Service <laughs> analytic. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's uh, our hope that it mm -hmm. is going to turn into that at some point in time. Yeah, but, but self service modeling actually yeah. of your planning. Uh, yeah, so yeah. that you can also. Yeah, do. yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I have to ask one question. Mm -hmm. The world map that we always <laughs> show. Do you use the world map? No, we don't use the world map. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying that every uh, dashboard demo I ever sit in on, they always show a world map that you can click yeah, on yeah. or even a, a globe that you can spin or something like that. Yeah. But uh, we're, a, we're a strictly Danish company, basically. We do have international customers, but we are quite Danish to the bone, to speak, so to speak. Okay. We could use a, a map over Denmark, obviously. Yeah. But we haven't, to be honest, we haven't done a lot of those. Because <laughs> it's very are, impressive to DMO. It's very, <laughs> yeah. but it's but, just not very useful. No, to be honest. Yeah, at the end of the day, you want a table and then and then some some red and green, uh, uh, I guess, yeah. notifications. Just the lamp telling yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah, that's much yeah. simpler. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, yeah, it's it's simpler. It's actually easier to see, I guess, but it's also simpler to build, I guess. Yeah, oh. and it's visually, it's much uh, faster to decode. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. And we are doing, uh, as we speak, um, pilots for the mobile uh, part of the SAP Analytics Cloud ah, okay, as well, okay. because I think that's going to somehow um, revolutionize the BI part uh, if you can put it into everybody's hand, right? But then you have to think about reporting in a completely different way because now it has to fit on a yeah, phone, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? True, true. So yes, not yeah. a lot of space to yeah. do. Is that also in your department, but that yeah. you do the, the front end? Yeah, the front end, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That kind of. But do you have uh, many people on the road that would uh, benefit from, from that? Yes, we have. I have hundreds of colleagues on the road every day. All, all the sales uh, yeah, reps yeah. are... Okay. are on the road on okay. a daily basis. So that's the majority of the 1,400 or, or what? No, but they are they are in the hundreds. I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. not sure just how mm, many, but mm. they are quite quite uh, yeah. numerous. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, why don't we make an app that can check the sales rep's calendar to see, okay, the, the rep is on his way to visit this and this customer and then just show him the report for that customer with the three best ideas on what could I talk to this customer about today. Yes, that's sounds, sounds of, great. That's sounds the great. kind of things I'm, I'm trying to yeah. facilitate. Ah, okay. yeah. And that, that kind of idea generation, does that come from your department typically or are you more kind of uh, going to your colleagues in the business to say, uh, what would you like? I think it's a mix. Yeah. Um, in the, we started doing advanced analytics in 2016, and at that point, obviously, everything had to come from us. Yeah, yeah. but you, you know what is possible. But, but we, we tried to come up with things of, oh, we, we could try this. Don't We think they would really love this. Hmm. We do a forecast on our, our, our money flow or yeah. something like that. But now that we've been... Um, We've had a six years uh, of experience. We have uh, found that uh, since the business know what we are capable of and uh -huh. what we are able to help them with, yeah. we end up uh, getting requests for really 
sort of magic things that we can't really do because yeah. <laughs> data has to be there, right? Yeah, yeah, we yeah, need exactly. some data in the bottom to do magic. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and sometimes we just don't have the data available to do certain things, right? Yeah. But, but they are coming to us, definitely. Uh, and we are also trying to, trying to come up with ideas like the ones I, yeah. like the one I just yeah, yeah. told you, because it's really, there's really no end to what you can bring this in, mm. in my opinion. This is data-driven business, yeah. right? So yeah. you just have to keep getting ideas on how can we use this, because we can use it for thousands of things, I think. But are, are you, are you, have you sort of, Uh, sort of institutionalized this idea generation. I mean, uh, I guess you have, you know, your your Monday meetings or whatever, and then kind of is there any ideas cooking or or is it kind of ad hoc? Uh, you oh, what about this? Or I'm trying to institutionalize it. Yeah. This uh, group that we did the data to value uh, yeah. Yeah. workshop with. Yes, yes. Um, Because I think you need to somehow institutionalize it to make sure that we become a learning organization, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't know how to do that right now. None of us do. So someone has to start bringing us together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that's great. what I'm trying to do, yeah. really to facilitate this co-creation kind of thing. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, and just thinking about what you said before, with, with it's a changing world. Uh, we are in a low margin uh, Business. How can we assist in this uh, challenging world to 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 bring data exactly. that, that they can help take smart decisions yeah, exactly. for the customers? Exactly. Right. It's, it's, so we really try to meet with with business people, e even as high up as uh, our our CEO and CFO, mm -hmm. uh, to just have them share dilemmas with us, basically. Uh, right, not yeah. not sort of. Um, specifications for a certain data set that they would like, but mm. just share thoughts on, yeah, 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 yeah. oh, I wish I could, I knew some more about this and that. Yeah. And then actually you would probably often say, but but hey, hey that's super simple. We can we can easily get that uh, your way because you have the foundation to actually do this. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but a lot of the advanced analytics um, tasks very often start off at this very abstract level mm. where it's very very fussy what yeah. we're really trying to do. Yeah, yeah. And then we may try a few things mm. and, and give up because before we figure out just how to solve uh, things. And sometimes we we have to admit that we can't do it because we don't have the data. Mm. Uh, but that's, but, that's but I mean, I, I, I like the approach. I mean, it's actually also an approach that I, I uh, uh, would, would want to advocate. Basically start with the ideas, start with the business, start with the requirements as opposed to sort of amassing a lot of data, dumping a lot of data, and then hoping something will, will blossom on top of that. It, exactly. it, as you say, uh, it, 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 it just becomes disorganized. It's, I mean, it's the same when, uh, with the photos that we take from our iPhone, right? I mean, I think I have on some cloud service, uh, I don't know, 15,000 yeah, <laughs> <laughs> images. I don't dare delete them because, but on the other hand, They are actually they are useless to me, right? Yeah. Because yeah. there's so many. That <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's a, a good example. Yeah, yeah. but um, okay. Uh, yeah, so so so, but but you so sometimes an idea uh, emerges and you don't have the data for that. But you mentioned earlier on that I mean, if the data is in ERP, it's quite easy for you to that's actually. That's easy for us to yeah, solve. Yeah, that's yeah. the easy, easy part. Yeah. Okay. Then we have some other I, I infrastructure um, platforms, uh, yeah. nodes, or uh, Salesforce. Yeah. Um, and we uh, interface with all those as well. Okay. And then uh, sometimes we also get external data from well, CR or. And you, you bring that into HANA or? Yeah. Into HANA Native or into BW or both, actually? Y usually into BW through OWL. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so, so when you so the data sourcing is always sort of BW style. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that works for you. That works for us. That's great. But we can't <laughs> scale it because if yeah. we were to bring in, for instance, uh, behavioral data from our website, yeah, they are huge. Yeah. So True. that wouldn't work because we can't we can't, can't bring in data of that uh, size. That, no, no. Okay. That wouldn't work no. well. So if we wanted to do that at some point in time, that would be have to done would have to be done 
on a Elsewhere. different platform, yeah. and then we would need to somehow connect the two systems. Yeah. And as far as I've seen the data warehouse cloud demo, I think that product might be the answer to that. Yeah, that that at least is the vision. Uh, um, and I mean, you can uh, of course bring that data into your hyperscaler, uh, but I mean, most of the SAP solutions is now also on hyperscalers, right? So you have yeah. the op opportunity with, say, HANA Cloud. Mm -hmm. This is not a sales uh, promotion, of course, but but with uh, with Hana Cloud and the data lake capabilities there, actually to store a lot of yeah. data. So that option is there. But there, you have sort of started to look into. Okay, so how should we? What's our next step there? Yeah, and that's still too early, I guess. To or well, we we probably need the first uh, real case yeah. to take a, a decision. Right? Ah, okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. So it's always case driven. That's nice, actually. How yeah. are you ever going to get funding if it's not case? No, yeah, true, true. No, no, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but but I mean, you have found a good combination. I, mean, I think most most companies is of course case driven, but then in in some places, I mean, the difficulty about being strictly case driven is that that in in some cases investments uh, are so big that a, a single case cannot drive it. But if you have the foundation in place, uh, you know then you can support multiple cases from different parts of the organization. Yeah, But that's I, just difficult for some places and potentially I, also. I totally agree mm. yeah. that the case-driven uh, approach, in, in that you would sort of lose the, stu the strategic, the strategic yeah, yeah. part of it, yeah. in my opinion, because what, what with the next case and the next case and the next case, yeah. you don't know that. But at least you have the foundation in place, or yeah. at least parts of it, right? So, and then you have sneaked in, as you said, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the improvements uh, uh, yeah. that yeah. will actually allow you to be much more yeah. proactive and, and, and uh, agile yeah. when you address business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's <laughs> nice. Yeah. And I think it, it, it sounds like I'm coming from an architectural mindset. Like, okay, oh, well, we, we are fixing a little bit... Uh, as well in this investment for new stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then you also always have to think about the performance thing. That's yeah. just something that you will need to address every now and then on a regular basis because it doesn't come automatically. For free, okay. So no, let's let's talk, let's talk about that a little bit. So <laughs> I mean, we 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 promote Hana, of course, as a as a state of the art uh, in memory engine, column based, and so on. Uh, and it, I guess it performs well, but not always so. Our HANA platform performs very, very well. Okay. But we are we work on a, on a regular basis to make it do so. Uh, it's so, not just magic. It's, no, it, 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 no, it's you not need just to, magic. No. You need to work with it. Yeah, yeah. but but we do, and it, it's it's really quite uh, quite simple to be honest. Yeah. Okay. So, I think. You could work with this dynamic tiering. Yeah. Uh, we don't really do that. We just sort of flush out uh, very large tables from the memory every morning that we don't use because they are sort of bottom layers mm -hmm. in our in our architecture. Yeah. And that works for us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So don't make it hard. Yeah. You can make it simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, and and that has a sort of uh, you know prevented or what what, uh, what should I say? Uh, it has delayed the time. At which you needed to make further investments. Exactly. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that, so that's something that you should also work with, even though archiving is really even more boring than operations to many. Right? <laughs> and every everyone has been talking about archiving forever, right? Yeah, yeah, no yeah, one yeah. ever does it. No, 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 that's so true. That's true. <laughs> They're all consuming, and you always end up deleting stuff you shouldn't delete. Yeah, it, and yeah. yeah. But you have to consider archiving, even I think even if you go cloud, because this yeah. idea that Space is free. It's really not no, true. No, 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 no. I'm glad you confirm it because yeah. it's 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 sort of an urban myth going around out, yeah. around out there. That if you go cloud, it's going to be free. It doesn't no, matter no. how big it is, but it does matter. We 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 can be uh, upfront. We were uh, I work in sales, yeah. and and eventually we come to uh, the cost for the machines. And if we're talking one terabyte, two, three, four, five, yeah, six, yeah, yeah. It, it matters. It, there comes the cost to that, yeah. and it's yeah. it's yeah. not. Uh, 
it, it has a chunk and it has of money it, it, it comes it. with the hyperscalers as well as far yeah, as yeah, I've yeah, heard yeah. that <coughs> they are sold in as if it's almost free but if you have humongous amounts of data it's not really that no, no, and, no. and then you start it talking about production the test environment and larger landscapes then the yeah. two three copies of the production and yeah. suddenly boom the landscape becomes the big yeah. one yeah. exactly <laughs> So I think that's worthwhile looking into every now and then. So. Yeah, but you you have your SAP systems are uh, in the basement down here, or I mean they are it's your own basically. No, no, no. The hosting, the the server hosting is done by Kindle. Okay, yeah, got it. But it's it's yours. Your, yeah, your, your, yeah, yeah. We yeah, are yeah. on our yeah. own on prem. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of tiers, you mentioned before we started that your BW is only two tiers. Um, right. And how do you make that work? I mean, when 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 we talk to clients, mm-hmm. I mean, they always say, I mean, we need the same amount of tiers as we have in our ERP. Why? Yeah, I mean, you you tell me. I'm honestly. <laughs> Why would asking. you need the same amount of tiers? <laughs> Because uh, you you develop uh, perhaps a solution. On the ERP that that in turn uh, uh, triggers some reporting in 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 BW. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it does, right? Mm-hmm. So you develop on development, and then you promote to QA in in both uh, ways. But but you you have found another way to do it. Well, we just uh, ended up uh, in in a situation where we found that our test system wasn't really creating any value for us, basically. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because running a test system doesn't come for free. No, you sure. have to buy the hardware. You have to upgrade the the software every now and then. Absolutely. You have yeah. to load data. You even have to monitor data because if you want really good data on your test platform, you need to monitor them. So you end up spending a lot of time having, managing it. managing that that yeah. platform, yeah. and then realizing that you don't really use it for anything because at the end of the day, our business are really not able to test the BI reports in other places than the, in our productive environment. So so we we ended up thinking it was just a bump on the road, honestly. Yeah, no, that's, that's so <laughs> by taking it out, we have reduced the frozen windows that we have to go through when whenever we upgrade and we try to mm-hmm. be very um, strict in upgrading at least once a year yeah. to make sure we always have the latest um, service pack stack. Super. Yeah. Okay. So ha- having that, having the tiers compromised, is going to shortens the window, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 To be, be more agile, nice. because sometimes it it seems like it rather becomes longer at some customers. They want even more systems. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Rather than rather that's uh, at least how I yeah, yeah. sometimes meet and and. Yeah. But it then comes a time to it. Then yeah. you will not be as agile. So, so your development system is it uh, full size, so to speak, and, or is it very few no, data? It's very few data. Uh, yeah, very few data. <clears throat> yeah, because what we often see is that you have yeah development with relatively few data, but the QA system is full size, right? So it's quite costly, actually. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because you want you want to test the performance also. Exactly. So you kind of you test the performance once you get into development, or oh, sorry, into production. Yeah. 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 How how do you, how do you manage that then? So you introduce some a new report or a changed report into production, and then there is a then the business is is evaluating it and see. Yeah, we test. Yeah, yeah, we test it directly in production. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, we do. Makes it works. <laughs> but but yeah, it's yeah. BI, I'm not sure why this idea that the BI uh, architecture has to sort of mimic the ERP one. I'm not sure where that evolved. No, 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 no. But keep it, keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. Keep I it don't simple. want to be, but sometimes I, I hear the, the, the implementation part, no, so it makes it easy to, there is a clear cut between, okay, now we enter into unit test or integration test or system test. Then it's so, It it's, it, it's an easy yeah, one to no, one I'm, kind I'm, I'm of. Sure, uh, I'm sure it works very well it in works, places and it, it works very well in the ERP string, yeah. no mm-hmm. doubt. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it does because, but but the ERP system is something completely different from the yeah. BI platform. Mm-hmm. That's the document flow system, right? Yeah. So you have to make sure that all the flows are working when you reach production. Otherwise, you really have a problem. 
So it's it's I guess it's it has to do with governance somehow. But so how do you actually do that? Once once a new report is ready, you promote it to 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 production. Then then you you we, unleash. We develop uh, reports directly in production. Ah, I yeah, think yeah, a lot okay. of companies yeah. do that yeah, and just yeah. sort of travel them back to development for security issues. If ah, you want okay, to, okay. If, if you mistake. Yeah. Delete them by mistake or something. Okay. Like that. You can bring them up again. No, I I will remember this. This is a huge cost driver, of course. It is. Uh, uh, yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and actually, I remember uh, our our new rice concept. Uh, initially, uh, the BW in rice. So so SAP uh, not just hosted, but also uh, you know managed. Uh, um, Uh, was two strings, but now recently we have then introduced a third string, probably because, uh, or the third tier, uh, uh, probably because there was a lot of requests to do that. Yeah. But I guess uh, well, someone, she, someone she initially she was, decided, hey, two should be enough, right? But um, it for is the B, but, but for, for, for BW. Is BW part of the RISE? Or? Yeah, you, you can, you can okay. have BW in RISE as well, okay. of course. Yeah. Okay. But for new clients, often uh, uh, we would recommend data warehouse cloud. It depends a little bit, you know, on the size, of course, and, and yeah. the type of work. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Right, time is flying uh, um, uh, when you are in good company, uh, but we need to round off somehow. Uh, this has been super interesting. Uh, before we round off, uh, what's what's out there on the horizon uh, uh, for for Pauline Vimula and, and your, your organization? Well, I think more of what we are already doing, yeah. becoming even more data-driven, getting even more better ideas on how we can support the business on a daily basis to yeah. get easy easy knowledge and, yeah. and be able to do decisions out there. Yeah. So it's really decision support. Yeah. And, and you mentioned along the way here, you talked about BW for, uh, yeah, BW for Hana. Mm -hmm. uh, is that on the horizon? That's that's definitely on the roadmap. But then, just recently, I heard about this data warehouse cloud. So I'm I'm trying to figure out just how that journey is going to be for real now yeah. because that's not quite clear. To me. No, no. I mean, but let's have the discussion. Yeah. Of course, I mean there, there are pros and cons, but but uh, but I mean there are. I've spoken to several that that kind of they are with their BW. Uh, what's the next step? Yeah. And 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 some are exploring whether data warehouse cloud might be you know the next step. Uh, yeah, yeah, at least part of the next yeah. step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in the BW environment. So hopefully we'll get uh, that discussion <laughs> at some time. Mm -hmm. Okay, but but how about yourself then, Agita? Um, is uh, you you are super satisfied or? Uh, I am. Yeah. I love the the platform and I love data. Yeah. And I love tech. So yeah, I mean, fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> and Lenny Müller. <laughs> Absolutely, Best place to work. Yeah. 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 Okay, but um, but then. Um, I guess, by the way, uh, just making sure uh, uh, we put your your contact details uh, on the different media here. Uh, I guess the audience, if they want to explore how you rotate your uh, your 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 colleagues and uh, how you manage with only two uh, uh, two tiers and 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 how you uh, explore new opportunities with the business, they can reach out to you. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Super. I'm sure they will actually. But so <laughs> thanks a lot, Gita, uh, for for hosting us here at uh, Lenvi Müller. This was super interesting. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Really interesting. And this was the uh, 21st episode of uh, of Data Lab Dialogues, uh, a podcast out of uh, the Data Lab in Copenhagen. Thanks a lot, and see you soon again.